Good to be back, standing here before you this morning. Uh, although I did put a little 10 minute sermon up last week, I call that the on location sermon that I did from my front yard right outside the van as I was shoveling the snow. So some of you may have seen it. Um, I just wanted to put something up there for those that were uh, wanting to just have some kind of message and I figure that in the future I will continue to do that for those that are connected uh, to the internet. My sermon topic this morning coming from the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 34 verses 1 through six, as it says in the bulletin, but I've got two more verses that I'm going to tack on, and that's verse seven and eight. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear and fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. My topic, how blessed are you? You know, I've had some time to really think about this, and I know um, during this past week with all of the, the snow that we had and and there were different snow amounts throughout the area. And I think between Shepherdstown and Martinsburg, we had a, a total of, I guess, about 40 inches. And one spot in my yard, I measured, measured 35 and a, a half. And then another spot in my backyard, the yardstick was too short, and I measured over 40. And uh, as I watched... One of my dogs who wanted nothing to do with it, and the other one, he was just a frolicking. That's puppy Prozac Duke. He was out there digging tunnels in the snow and burying himself and coming up and down and having a good time. I'm saying, go right on. And me and Kobe just stood there and looked at him and said, you go right ahead. You see, Duke, uh, Duke is the young one. He's only about three years old. And Kobe is 10, so that's like 70 years old. So. You know, that's, that's a few years older than me. And so Kobe and I stood back there and watched and said, go on, fool, go on. You go right ahead. But I had a lot of time to do some meditating. And I said, that's why I enjoyed, uh, the, as I said, the pajama week. Because I had a lot of time to meditate and reflect and think on some things. And several verses that the Lord gave to me, and uh, this was one of them. This passage of scripture in Psalm 34, the, the hymn book of the Bible. I got to thinking about all of the different blessings. And you know, and as we thought about how that storm tracked, and one of the things that I knew growing up in the D.C. area, and a lot of people would always panic. They'd say, oh, there's snow coming. And if you looked at the path of the snow, if it was coming due east, that was something you didn't worry about. Because if it was coming due east, there's something called the Appalachian Mountains. And if it hit those mountains, it wasn't going to do much because when it hit the mountains, it just kind of fizzled out at the mountains. But if it was one of those storms that started in the west and it dipped down to the south and picked up some moisture in the Gulf of Mexico and then made a U-turn and came up and tracked along the edge of the mountains, you better run to the grocery store and get all the milk and the bread and the toilet paper and everything else you need because it's going to be a big one. And sure enough, that's what happened. But I got to thinking about how this was one of those things that we knew was going to happen because it was predicted. And you know what came to my mind? 
It came to my mind this whole past week, the story in the Bible of a man we're all familiar with. And if I mention his name, you'll go, oh yeah, Noah. Remember him? He told folks it was going to rain. It had never rained, so nobody believed him. But he gave them warning the rain was coming. All right? So when it rained and folks weren't prepared, Noah was because Noah had been preaching and telling folks the whole time, look, it's going to rain. You better get right. You better get ready. When the rain came, Noah was ready. Noah was blessed. We always are wanting God to bless us. But we need to bless God. Now, we need to assess our blessings. Now, there's a lot of times when we're blessed and we just take it for granted. Did anybody stop to reflect how you managed to make it through the night? Has anybody ever stopped to think how your heart just continues to breathe, to beat? And you continue to breathe while you sleep? Now, I have a condition called sleep apnea, all right? Now, what happens is, if I'm not wearing something called a CPAP machine, I stop breathing while I sleep. Now, that's a condition that if I'm not wearing that machine, that controlled pressure air pump, then... There's a, there's a possibility, and a lot of people died years ago, and nobody even realized what was happening. Oh, so-and-so died in their sleep. Healthy as an ox and died in their sleep. And a lot of people now, they realize what probably happened is the sleep apnea killed them. The automatic reflex to breathe while you sleep just didn't work. So that's nothing that one should take for granted that you're just going to continue to breathe while you sleep. Have you ever stopped to think that you have the use of your limbs? We take that for granted. Your eyesight. You don't appreciate it until you have to do something about it. Those are things that we take for granted. There's all this talk now and all this hoopla in Congress about global warming or global cooling or whatever they're trying to call it. But the truth of the matter is there is a star that's 93 million miles away that is a star. We take for granted that as the earth turns, we're going to see it in the morning and it's going to go down in the evening. But if we look at what happens with other stars, sometimes those other stars, they crescendo and disappear. One day, My God. that 93 million mile away star it's going to happen. We don't know when, and we don't know the day nor the hour. We take it for granted. When we get up in the morning, we ought to say, Lord, I thank you that the sun came up this morning. Have you ever stopped to think it, that if the earth were just one mile closer, to that star 93 million miles away, it would be too hot for us to live here. Or if it were one mile farther away from it, it would be too cold for us to live here. 
It's just where it needs to be. Right. Now, we complained about all that snow that we got last week. But let me tell you, all of it didn't evaporate because what some of it did is it's soaked down into the soil and that's our water bank for when the summer come and we need water, there it will be. We need to thank God for a lot of things that we take for granted. We seem to sometimes have a sense of entitlement syndrome. There is a gimme God doctrine. Anybody ever heard of that before? Pro no, because I just invented it. <laughs> but you've probably heard it. And some of us may have subscribed to the gimme God doctrine. I know there are some preachers that subscribe to the gimme God doctrine. Yes, yes. There's some churches that are built on the gimme God doctrine. Lord, if you just give me that, I'm going to bless you. Lord, if you just give me this, I'm going to bless you. Lord, I bless you because you've given me this and you've given me that and you've given me this. And that's why I'm blessed. But you see, Romans tells us that a lot of times God gives us things to gently lead us to repentance to say, you see, I'm giving you these things to show you what I can do if you but trust me. Many times we think that the blessings of God are a sign that we are OK with God. Sometimes God is just trying to get our attention through his blessings to lead us to repentance. If you give me this, God, I'll bless you. If you give me that, God, I'll bless you. There's a worldly song that I think if God wanted to play that for us, he could play it and it would cause some of us to be taken back. Any of you ever heard the song, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Now, if we look back at the psalm that was read so beautifully by Will, and I have it in my Bible in the King James, it says, I, meaning us, will extol or bless the Lord at all times. What does that mean? That means in everything and at all times. In the morning when I get up, while I'm at work or while I'm at play, I give God the blessings. I praise God, in other words, for everything that I have and everything that I do and everything about me. Not just when I sit down at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Not just when I lay me down to sleep at night. But everything that I do, I find a moment to say, Lord, I thank you. That I see the sunshine. I thank you for the beauty of what the snow looked like when it falls. I thank you for the quiet that comes when the snow falls. I thank you that you blessed me to the survive in the midst of the storm. I thank you for the rain that falls. I thank you for the, the flowers that bloom in the spring. I thank you for the changing of the seasons. I thank you for a place that gives me shelter. It might not be a mansion on a hill with a coupe de ville or an escalade or an SUV outside, but it might be something that I have to patch up every once in a while to get me from point A to point B, but I thank you that I've got something to get me where I'm going. I thank you that I've got a roof over my head. I might not have the best and the best clothes on my back, but I thank you that they're clothes, that they're clean, and that they keep me warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Lord, I thank you that I might not be eating filet mignon, but I thank you that I got food to eat. My God. My God. <laughs> My sister and I were talking about during the week 
I was telling her about how I made leftover fried chicken soup and she laughed. And we were remembering growing up how, yeah, oh, it was good too. I got some fresh vegetables and I diced up that chicken because I was tired of eating it the way it was, but I says, I ain't wasting it. And I diced it up and I put me some, some onions in it and some, some vegetables and some mushrooms and I added a little seasoning and some chicken broth and I put that on slow simmer and oh, it was some kind of good. <laughs> and then I got the last thing of milk they had at the Dollar General and the last thing of eggs and I made myself some cornbread. You're talking about a meal fit for a king. And then my sister and I, yeah, oh yeah. And I ate off that for a few days and I said, hmm. Now I calculated the math about what that meal would cost. I said, that meal was about three cents a meal. You can't go in the room, no restaurant and eat for three cents a meal. And I told my sister, I said, yeah, I said, I remember the days we ate like that. And she said, yeah, and having bean soup where there was only one piece of meat in the soup and the man in the house got the meat because he had to go to work. I said, yeah, I said, but my soup had meat in every spoonful. You know I'm blessed. My, my, my. What have you done for me lately, God could say. Well, God, I can tell you what I'm doing. Everything that I have, I thank you for. Yes, Lord. In every breath I take, I thank you for. Yes. Every step I take, I thank you for. When I look around and I find others who are not in the same shape I'm in, I thank you, Father, that you bless me that I'm in the shape that I'm in because it could be worse. Why would you curse the darkness when you got a candle you could light? And if you don't have a candle, why would you curse the darkness if you could flick a bick or light a match? You see... When I think of this, I ask myself these questions. How blessed am I? And you can ask yourself, how blessed are you? I'm very blessed because, number one, I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. Because when God made us, he made no junk. You see, when I read my Bible and I go back and look at Genesis, I see that God has nowhere in there where he says that he made any kind of mistake. Because when he finished his creation in the six days, mm -hmm. I see that the, the account that is given, God said two words about everything that he created. He didn't say, I made a mistake and I sh it's not done right. I should have done this and I should have done that. I should go back and edit this and edit that. He made two words that he said. He said, that's good. So that means that when he made you and I, he made no mistake. Some of us sometimes, we criticize the way we look. We criticize that our hair can't blow in the wind. We criticize that we lost some or the color is not right. Our nails aren't the right shape or our skin's not the right color. But I go back to what God said when he made us. He said, that's good. How blessed am I? I'm blessed because when God made me, he said, that's good. How blessed am I? I'm blessed because I got up this morning. How blessed am I? I'm blessed because by faith I can leave and walk out of the door and know by faith 
When I get in my car, he will lead and guide me where I need to go. I'm blessed because he got me here this morning. I'm blessed because I'm in your presence and I can enjoy your fellowship. How blessed are you because of whatever God has done for you, you are blessed. I'm blessed because I know that when this earthly tabernacle is dissolved and I lay this carcass down, how big or how small it is, how young or how old it is, how dark or how light it is, how long or how short the hair or whatever it looks like, when I lay it down, I've got another building not made by hands, eternal in the heavens. No matter how painful the walk or how spry the walk, when I lay it down, I've got another building. A building that's not prone to sickness. A building that's not prone to high blood pressure. A building that's not prone to low blood pressure. A building that is eternal in the heavens. How blessed am I? I'm blessed because he said he would never leave me nor forsake me. I'm blessed because when I need him, he's only a prayer away. I'm blessed. How blessed are you? But wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got two more things I want to tell you. Before I take my seat and we pray out and go home, I got two more blessings here. You know, there's a man that lives at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Well. Oh, somebody said, uh oh. <laughs> no, it ain't about him, it's about whoever sits there. Yes. You know, there are a group of people who are paid to watch and protect whoever holds that office. Oh, y'all got quiet on that one. Whoever that person is, whether you like them or not, somebody's paid to watch that person to make sure they're safe from all the kooks out there. All right? They are paid to risk their life to protect that person and that person's family. And if you watch when the chief executive of these United States is anywhere, those people that are paid to watch and protect him are never looking at him they're always watching everywhere else. But at the first sound of something that's not right, I've watched it happen. I've seen it happen before with pre presidents I didn't vote for, didn't like, but I had to respect them because they hold that office. You hear what I'm saying? I've seen it happen at a moment's notice. If something, some strange sound or something happened, they start pushing them down into the vehicle and the first thing they do, start checking them over for injuries. Well, y'all got real quiet on that. Well, here is what I want to tell you. Did you know The scripture tells us that we are the very elect of God. See, I told you it wasn't about the person at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's about us. We are the very elect of God. But here is what it has to say about us. Now, I bet you've never looked at this verse like this before. Oh, Dr. Taylor's going, oh, where is he going with this? Preach. <laughs> Here we go. Here it is. Now, I want you to hear me. Now, this, see, this is what happens when I get snowed in. I get to looking at stuff. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about 
them, that's you and me, that fear him and delivereth them. See what I'm doing? Delivereth them. So in other words, each of us has some protection. Yes. My God. Yes. My God. And I'm not talking about no Glocks, no Uzis, no nothing like that. I'm talking about the angels in heaven, the host of the Lord that protects us when we don't even see it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. My God. My God. So while we're not looking in the demons and imps are at us, the Lord's angels are looking all around where they at. Come on, goodness. Come on, mercy. Hold up your shield. They're encamped all around us. Why? Because we have reverence. That's what the word fear means. And love the Lord. But then here's something else. This was the other thing. Remember, I told you I got one more verse. Here's the other thing. In verse 8. Now, uh, you go to some restaurants. And sometimes they have as an appetizer something called a sampler. And sometimes you go to parties and they have little trays of hors d'oeuvres with little toothpicks in them. It's all about the presentation. And they can make it look so good. And you know, sometimes that stuff tastes so good you can fill up on the appetizers. And I know why they call it finger food. <laughs> That's why they give them little napkins. See, because after you do this, then you got to wipe your fingers before you go, hi, how are you? Because everybody else doing the same thing. You know I'm right. But here is the other thing I got. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because see, right now, all we get is just a Taste. We're just getting the appetizer because the half that has never been told hasn't been seen yet. We're just getting the appetizer when we come in for worship. You think you're having a joyous time now because you're out and you've enjoyed what the kids sang this morning? Oh, it was good. And you've enjoyed the fellowship? Oh, it's good. It's good. This is just an appetizer. The banquet's yet to take place. The main course is yet to come. We're filling up on the appetizers, but yet there's still plenty good room for the main course. Right now, we're just getting a taste. Taste and see that the Lord is good, but the blessing will come for the man that or the woman that trusteth in him until the end. That's my part I added. Because the trust, is, trust comes in waiting and holding out until the end for the main course. So save your fork. Save your fork. Because the main course is coming. And then one day, when we gather together around the throne in our robes of righteousness and look across the banquet table and wave at one another and run around and greet one another, the question I want to ask each of you, and you can ask me, we can ask one another, how blessed how blessed are you? Is there one? Is there one? 
Is there one this morning? And y'all know that's one of my favorite songs. What is this? Because whether or not you realize it, I don't care how bad you feel or how bad you're aching, you're blessed. I don't care what's going on in your life. You're blessed. Yes, sir. Could be so much worse. I don't care what you are facing tomorrow. Thank the Lord you're blessed right now. Thank you, Lord. And if you name the name of Christ, the word says 